March 2011. Cherry Hill, New Jersey. The upscale suburb is bustling with morning commuters. Cherry Hill is right on the borderline of Philadelphia. I would describe it as a swanky area. You may have a neighbor with a brand new Mercedes Benz, but you have one too. Over on the southeast side of the city, police are surveilling a local shipping store. We'd received uh, an anonymous tip. They found out that there was going to be a large package of cocaine that would be coming through. Earlier that day, police discovered two large packages of drugs that had been shipped to the store under what seemed to be a fake name. Each package contains four kilograms of cocaine. A kilogram is valued somewhere between like thirty and forty thousand dollars a piece. Police had the clerk wrap the packages back up and were now laying in wait to see who would arrive to claim them. We put one of our detectives in the store with them in an undercover capacity just to have one closer set of eyes on whoever might be coming in there uh, to pick up these packages. Police worry the perp has caught wind of the sting. But there wasn't a lot of activity there at all that day. We knew that if it didn't happen that day, that it just wasn't going to happen. However, a flashy sedan eventually catches the detective's attention. The woman driving the vehicle enters the store and goes straight for the packages. It was tense. Everybody was ready to go. But just as police think they've got their suspect in their crosshairs, the woman's demeanor changes. She seemed like she became clued in somehow that something was up, that she was being watched. The woman abruptly leaves the store empty-handed. But police believe they're onto something. We had a pretty good assessment that she was involved in this. They're very suspicious of this woman. After their suspect drives off, detectives go inside the shipping store to make contact. What the clerk tells them will spearhead the entire investigation. The clerk recognized her. She came in all the time with her boyfriend. Right away, he said, that's Flippa's girl. Jamaican immigrant Marsha Bernard had moved to the U.S. to break into the music scene. Marsha had a interest, a deep passion for music and for dance, and actually hoped to be a part of that world. She actually could imagine her life being exactly what she saw in the music videos. One night, Marsha went out to see a popular dance hall performer who also hailed from Jamaica. 24-year-old Andrew Davis, a.k.a. Flippa Mafia. Dance hall is very important to Jamaican culture. It's how people express themselves through dance and music. Marsha loved how Flippa was a natural on stage. When he stood on stage, it just, the crowd just went crazy. We're talking about a man who would come to his concerts with bags of money, and he would throw money out to the crowd. Marsha was beautiful, so beautiful, that she caught Flippa's eye as he performed. Flippa was so intrigued by Marsha that he brought her up on stage. He reaches out and grabs Marsha. That's the uh, grounds for something magical to happen. Uh, I would imagine in Marsha's experience, it must have been so exciting to be chosen by this person and to be shown that uh, affection and desire in front of everyone. She was in a position that a lot of the other women probably would have wanted to be in. She was the queen of the dance hall, at least at that moment. The excitement that you get from that, from all of those eyes on you and everyone watching you. He's pulling me up on stage. He's directing all of his desires towards me. You all see it. It gives you a rush. It makes you feel exhilarated. 
As the weeks went on, Marsha became a staple on Flippa's arm, sharing the spotlight with him in the dance halls. And it wasn't long before their public chemistry transferred to the bedroom. He was representing a part of uh, something that she loved. She loved dance hall. She loved, you know, the Jamaican culture and the music. She definitely craved him. Flippa saw that and took advantage of that. Flippa showed her attention. He demonstrated what deep down inside she desired from a man. Flippa had all the words, all the things to tell her to make her feel good. He made her feel sexy. Marsha quickly moved in to Flippa's swanky condo, and the two lived a life of luxury. Diamonds and pearls and clothes and shoes. She had that at her fingertips. Marsha was buying the best of the best, the best cars, designer outfits, designer bags, shoes, not only to align herself with him and his lifestyle, but to also make sure that all the other women around him saw that and recognized her top woman status. Marsha made sure that when she came out, she was the eye candy that everybody was looking at. By the late 2000s, not only had the couple's wealth and status skyrocketed, but their family had also grown. They had two children. She was a good mother. Now she has a family that she also loves. Marsha really believed that her relationship with Flippa was the relationship of her dreams. The Jamaican beauty had a life of riches and love. But little did she know that being Flippa's girl required more than met the eye. March 2011. In Cherry Hill, New Jersey, police have just surveilled a woman they believe to be connected to a large cocaine shipment. They found $160,000 you know, worth of drugs in two packages, and they wanted to bust the person whose drugs they were. Though the woman had left without touching the packages, the clerk seemed to recognize her. He said she was Flipper's girl. I said, who's Flip? He says, his name's Flippa Mafia. He's a, he's a DJ, he's like a dance hall artist. He said, just look him up. So literally, I take my phone out, and here pops a picture of Andrew Davis, AKA Flippa Mafia. They see Flippa and right there beside him is the woman who had just left the store. They learned she was 29 year old Marsha Bernard. Little did detectives know that they had just stumbled into a world of music and glamor wrapped up in a massive drug operation of international proportions. People thought it was just the music, but it was a shock to everyone that he was in other illegal activities. In the spring of 2011, Marsha Bernard and her DJ boyfriend, Andrew Davis, AKA Flippa Mafia, we're living the high life in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Flipper brought Marsha to that world. He is very lavish, and not just on the spending of his own, but his ability to shower her with gifts and with money. They were living it up. He was showing off what he had earned as a part of dance hall life, and Marsha was his girl. The power couple had an exclusive condo where they raised their two children. It was about the life. It was about the glamour for Flippa and Marsha. She sees him in those roles um, as a father, a protector, but also provider. She's used to a certain, you know, lifestyle, and it can only get better from there. With her man by her side, 
Marsha felt like she was living the dream. But little did she know, her world of glitz and glam would soon come crashing down around her. March 2011. Cherry Hill police believe that Andrew Davis, also known as renowned Jamaican dancehall artist Flippa Mafia, and his girlfriend, 29-year-old Marsha Bernard, are connected to two confiscated packages holding over $160,000 of cocaine. Police had surveilled Flippa's girlfriend, and it looked like she was about to come pick up a package, but she felt kind of uneasy thinking that the police were maybe watching her, so she left. Ultimately, the day ends with uh, no one coming back to uh, pick up those packages. The packages just get logged in evidence. Back at the station, detectives continue looking into Flippa and Marsha. We get to the point of getting court authorization to, uh, to conduct this wiretap phase of the investigation. We learned from the, the phone conversations that we had that this is a significant drug distribution organization. It was clear that Flippa was running an organization that was bigger than the police thought. Flippa was thought to have moved millions of dollars worth of drugs in the States. We also learned that Marsha played a much more significant role than we thought. You would hear somebody say, shoot me an address. And then you'd get a follow-up call to Marsha saying, hey, it's shipped. But as detectives prepared to move in on their suspects, they received some unfortunate news. They found out that Flippa had left the country in the middle of the night. He had gone back to Jamaica. They thought that he was probably feeling the heat and decided to get out of the country to lay low. Once he was in Jamaica, the concern was, is he ever coming back? It seemed the drug kingpin has left Marsha to carry on business as usual in his absence. I overhear this call from Flippa to Marsha from Jamaica about a huge delivery of drugs. Flippa had instructed Marsha to go meet this individual, Devon Grant, he actually said, bring him one. We understood one to mean one kilo of cocaine. After the shipping store went bust, um, you know, the police are hoping that this is their opportunity to finally catch them red-handed. On the day of the sting, police follow Marsha to a parking lot behind a local restaurant. Detectives stand by as Marsha gets out of her vehicle and meets with Devon. She gave them a shopping bag, at which point in time we can see that something was being done in the front passenger side of this car. Detectives radio their backup and waste no time in apprehending the pair of suspects. She was more in shock than anything else. She was very scared. I would imagine that she felt her world was crumbling down all around her. This was a mom. This was somebody who was involved in this life, but never once expected to be in this situation. And in my opinion, was very fearful of what was going to happen next. When detectives confiscate the shopping bag, their suspicions are confirmed. Inside there was a kilo of cocaine. Obviously the phone conversations are very strong evidence, but the drugs that we had seized was probably the most significant piece of evidence. Detectives also find a receipt inside the package bearing Marcia's name. We find that bag, but we found a receipt in that bag with her name on it. How could you explain a way that we have this receipt attached to this kilo of cocaine? That receipt was their ticket to say, we got her. 
But Marsha Bernard isn't the big fish detectives are interested in. They want Flippa, and they hope Marsha is the key to catching him once and for all. They had Marsha, but what they wanted was Kingpin. They were hoping that she was going to flip on him. When detectives sit down with Marsha, they hope the mother of two will come clean. But getting her to open up will be easier said than done. She built up this, I am Flipper's woman, I am his everything. So now you have to prove that. She was willing to maintain that loyalty for her man at any cost. Her love for her man was more important to her than saving herself. New Jersey police have just taken mother of two, Marsha Bernard, into custody. After catching her red-handed, delivering a large shipment of cocaine. They believe that she was working for her boyfriend, who is a famous DJ named Flippa Mafia. Detectives believe that Flippa was actually a drug kingpin. People thought it was just the music. He was in other illegal activities, you know, distribution of drugs and that sort of stuff. Now that they have Flippa's main lady in custody, detectives are hoping they can persuade her to turn on her man. They begin by laying out the charges she's facing. Police tell her that they're going to charge her with drug distribution, conspiracy, and money laundering. Marsha was responsible for the operations of the business on US soil while Flippa was away in Jamaica. The cocaine was shipped here. And once it would end up with her, she would wait for directions from Flippa as to what to do. They made offers to her to, you know, give her less time if she would flip on Flippa. We made it clear to her, this is your chance. You're the one sitting here, but he's the one behind all of this. We want for him to be sitting in this chair right now, not you. Despite the severity of the charges against her, Marsha remains unshakable. I don't remember her doing anything other than just having this blank stare at me. This wasn't a situation that she can run from. Her tactic was to freeze. It's safe to just put up that guard and to not engage emotionally. Detectives try another tactic. They let Marsha know just how well Flippa is doing in Jamaica. He was being spotted at these different clubs. He was pouring champagne on women in champagne bubble baths. He was on stage with suitcases of money. He was shopping, he was doing shows. Uh, he was just continuing on with his lifestyle while Marsha was going through the situation in the US. But to detectives' dismay, Marsha still doesn't budge. Loyalty is a big thing in the Jamaican culture, especially with those who provide for you. It's very important that you are loyal to them. When you're with the love of your life, you want to preserve that relationship as much as you can. That loyalty comes with that even if it's misplaced at times. Detectives cut their losses and end the interview with Marsha. Instead of getting out on her own and saying, look, I'm not going to take the fall for this, she took the fall. Even when it was all falling apart, Marsha wanted to do whatever she has to do uh, for her men. After striking out with Marsha, detectives sit down with Devon Grant, who was arrested with Marsha during the drug bust. But Devon is just as tight-lipped. He wouldn't budge. He lawyers up immediately. He's not going to tell them anything. Neither individual wanted to cooperate. So we didn't get much information out of them that day. We didn't learn any more that day that we didn't already know from them. In the months that pass, 
police orchestrate a large sting to take down nearly a dozen of Flippa's associates, from the top down. But to their dismay, all remain loyal to their suspected leader. We had all these drugs, all this money, all these defendants, and for me, wasn't going to really be satisfied with this until he was here. Finally, in May of 2013, after nearly two years of trying to get their main man, detectives get the big break they've been looking for. They got in custody Leanna Bishop, who was one of the associates of Flippa. And she was willing to talk to the police if she had a deal. Leanna is one who was very close to Flippa and Marcia. She was in the inner circle. She had a little bit more information than potentially what everyone else saw. She was somebody who they, they utilized her house to store some of this cocaine prior to it being distributed. When Leanna tells detectives her story, it will turn the case on its head and finally give police some of the answers they've been looking for. The information she gave was the tipping point that pretty much cracked this case open. Flippa had other women in his life. Marcia wasn't the only one. We see that with Marcia, she would just go into herself and maintain that stoic composure. And that is what felt safe for her. Because she has become so enmeshed in her relationship with Flippa, she needs to protect him by any means. May 2013, New Jersey police have Marsha Bernard and nearly a dozen other associates in custody for their connection to an extensive drug ring run by Marsha's boyfriend, Andrew Davis, AKA DJ Flippa Mafia. We're talking about an international drug ring. It's worth millions of dollars, um, very intricate network. The one person they didn't have was Flippa. They believe Flippa was the mastermind. And Marsh is just doing his bidding. Flippa was in Jamaica basically um, calling shots or pulling the strings. That's the kind of what Marsha was doing. They needed someone to turn on him uh, so that they could get him charged and back to the United States. Fortunately, detectives are in luck. An associate of the drug ring who police have in custody, Leanna Bishop, has expressed an interest in cutting a deal. She was someone who was able to have access to Andrew and Marcia in a more internal way. She was certainly associated with what was going on behind the scenes with the two of them. Leanna says she'll confess to her role in the ring. As well as detail Marcia and Flippa's roles in exchange for a lighter sentence. We sat down and gave her kind of the opportunity to tell her side. Leanna starts from the beginning and explains how Flippa and Marsha went from the dance hall to the drug game. She knew Flippa and Marsha from back in the day, way before he started his drug business. Back then, everybody saw them as king and queen of the dance hall. They were the perfect couple. Whenever he did social events, she was right at his side in designer outfits. However, Leanna claims as time went by, Flippa became unsatisfied with his status and wanted more. He did have a good following in the States, but it didn't quite compare to his following in Jamaica. There is that need for consistent praise and for excitement and power, and to not have that is readily available for him in the US. That would bring about a sense of urgency to build that identity up here. Leanna explains that's when Flippa started 
building his drug empire to make some extra cash and expand his brand. You keep your money flowing and make it look like it's uh, legal when actually the flow is coming through illegal sources. Liana says she was there when Flipper revealed what he had been up to, and she immediately wanted in. Liana was storing the, the drugs in exchange for kind of the profit. She was in so much debt that she was just looking for a way out. According to Liana, Marcia wasn't as enthusiastic about Flipper's new venture into the drug trade. Marcia was a little uncomfortable with it at first, but Flippa reassured her that it was the best thing for their family. Marcia believed Flippa. She was so enamored with him that if he said that things were gonna be fine, she believed and trusted that. But Liana says, as the money skyrocketed, so did Flippa's thirst for women. Women other than Marcia. There was always just an abundance of women around Andrew and wanting his attention, touching his face, dancing on him, singing his praises. He commanded a lot of attention, and he was very comfortable with that. And for Marcia to be on the sidelines and to be experiencing that, she wasn't able to get too comfortable. The other women would try to also get his attention, and he would actually follow through. Liana tells detectives that eventually, her own friendship with Flippa began to evolve into something more, and the two began hooking up. Marcia's staying home more with the kids at this point. That left an opening on Flippa's arm when he was out at the clubs. Leanna explains that despite Flippa's attempts to keep his extramarital affairs on the down low, Marcia started to notice a change in him. dynamic of the relationship changes, and the love becomes a little bit more intermittent. She felt insecure. She didn't feel special. It would begin to possibly sow some seeds of insecurity. She always had an awareness that she could be replaced. And so there is that desire to do whatever it is that I have to do to get that love again. Leanna recalls that in a blatant effort to win back Flippa's affection, Marsha began taking a bigger role in the drug ring. Marsha was prepared to go all in. She wanted to continue to be that number one. That's where you see the values changing. She's gonna do whatever it is that he needs for her to do. But regardless of Marsha's devotion, Leanna admits she and Flippa continued their affair. Leanna had fallen completely under Flippa's spell, just like Marcia. Detectives are floored. With Leanna's statement in tow, they decide to take another crack at Marcia. Now, armed with the truth of his infidelity, they think she'll finally turn on her man. You could tell that it definitely upset her. She's feeling anger, she's feeling resentment, sadness, fear, all of these things. May 2013. Liana Bishop, longtime friend of Marsha Bernard and Andrew Flippa Mafia Davis, has just confessed to her role in their international drug operation. She was storing the drugs at her house and performing quality control checks on the drugs. Liana has admitted to detectives that she was also having an affair with Flippa, unbeknownst to Marcia. So for Liana, she was the other woman, and Marcia was the common law wife. Marcia and Flippa they were together. They had lived together. They had kids together. With Liana's testimony in tow, detectives take another crack at Marsha. 
Police tell Marsha everything Leanna said about the affair. The woman was a friend of Marsha's. She was someone that she saw all the time, someone who was uh, intertwined in their lives. To double down on Leanna's statement, detectives play recordings of the wiretaps from Flippa's associates. There's a conversation where they refer to Flippa's girlfriend. One of the individuals says, who, Marsha? And she goes, oh, no, the other one. You're watching the, the look on her face, so you, you could tell that it definitely upset her. But just when detectives think they finally convinced Marsha to flip on her two-timing man, she shocks them yet again. Despite the insurmountable evidence that the police have given Marsha in this investigation room, she decides to stand by her man. A lot of us will never understand but love makes you do stuff that doesn't often make sense to people. She completely and fully immersed herself in every aspect of who Flippa was, even at the detriment of her freedom, even at the breakup of her family, and even at the detriment of not being able to care for her children. Back inside her jail cell, Marsha receives no solace from Flippa, the man she's risking her life to save. She's sitting behind bars alone, and he doesn't even have the decency to reach out. He basically tried to completely eliminate any ties that he had to any of the people. His girlfriend, the mother of his children, is in jail, and he's sitting in Jamaica, essentially free from all of this. With Marsha, Leanna, and Flippa's other associates awaiting trial, detectives concentrate on nabbing their kingpin. And finally, in September of 2013, they get a promising tip. I start getting phone calls that, you know, people had been spotting him in different nightclubs. Flippa was back in the States, and he couldn't keep out of the limelight. Him being an entertainer, competing with other dancehall artists. You want that top spot. You know, I guess he decided to take that, that chance to hit the stage. Police stake out the clubs where Flippa has recently been spotted, hoping they'll finally get their man. He was always one step ahead of them. They could never locate him. But when detectives start looking outside of the box, they find another possible way to nab Flippa. The thing about drug dealers, it's always about the car they drive. It's flashy, but it's custom. Flippa had a few cars, of course. Reach out to a dealership and give them the description of the car. We said his name's Andrew Davis. And the guy says, he just called here two hours ago and said that he's looking to trade the car in and get something new. Because he is at that larger than life level, he's feeling untouchable. Marsha and Flippa, they have to be lucky every single move that they make. For us, sometimes we only have to be lucky once. When Flippa arrives at the dealership to make the exchange, police are there waiting for him. They made the arrest, and very quietly, he went with the officer. He was respectful. When he was arrested, we felt great. I don't know that I'll ever catch another break like that. Back at the station, detectives finally sit down face to face with Flippa. They lay out the mountain of evidence against him in hopes that he'll come clean. We had the drugs that we had seized, the wiretap conversations, the information from some of the other defendants. The detectives presented Flippa with Leanna's statement. But Flippa won't budge. 
He says, I have a lawyer. I don't want to talk to you guys. Okay, no problem. And that was it. With Flippa staying silent, detectives prepare for trial. But soon, Flippa's loyal fan club pleads guilty. Everybody except one. I knew once that trial started that she was in it for the long haul. Marsha was facing 21 years in jail, had this mountain of evidence against her. And instead of saving herself and telling the police what they wanted to know in terms of Flippa's participation in this drug ring, she decided she was going to stay faithful and loyal to her man. And you kind of wonder what kind of love makes you do that. But I, I guess it's the kind of love she felt. October 27th, 2015. Four years after detectives intercepted their first package, the trial for drug kingpin and dancehall star Flippa Mafia is almost underway. They decide to try Marsh Bernard, his girlfriend, mother of two of his children, alongside him. We made a decision to try them both together. From a prosecution standpoint, you couldn't tell the story of one without the other. Devon and Leanna had pleaded guilty for lesser sentences, whereas Marsha and Flippa decided they would take it up with the jury. While waiting outside the courtroom, Marsha finally comes face to face with Flippa for the first time in two years. The tension between the two of them was palpable. I mean, you could feel it. They would sit right next to each other and never even acknowledge each other at all. Though Marsha never speaks, it's clear that her thoughts are spiraling. She was taking a good long look at her life and asking herself, how did I get here? She was very scared, um, very nervous. As for Flippa, he sits there emotionless. For Flippa to be stoic, you know, he had to know that he was in really big trouble. Once everyone has taken their seat inside the courtroom, the trial begins. Prosecutors lay out damning evidence against the couple, including the wiretaps and witness statements. He would direct people to get a shipment together. He would then call Marsha and let her know that a shipment was on the way. And he would tell her who specifically to call and tell her, you know, to be there. He was able to maintain that control by frequent phone calls. She ran the show for him in the United States, but she didn't do anything without being told by him to do it. After the prosecution rests, Flippa's attorney starts to distance him from any wrongdoing. He said, remember, Marsha was here actually running the enterprise while he was in Jamaica. And so you consider yourself not being a part of it. I got clean hands. I, I wasn't there. Marsha was there. She used the money that I had. She did what she wanted to do. As for Marsha's attorney, he takes a different approach. Her attorney has only one good defense. She had no priors. Usually those are reasons to give her some leniency. Despite the defense's protestations, it only takes the jury a couple of hours to return with a verdict. Marsha and Flippa are found guilty. They were each convicted on the drug distribution and the money laundering. For his role as the kingpin, Flippa is handed a hefty sentence. Flippa had 
one sentence, one 25-year sentence. He isn't even eligible for parole until the year 2025. As for Marsha, she is sentenced to 21 years for being Flippa's right hand in the drug ring. She was very upset because uh, you know, I don't think she thought that she was going to be leaving her children uh, and not coming back that day. They wanted to make sure that Marsha was going to be punished for be willing to maintain this loyalty by any means for her man. She was made an example of. As Marsha and Flippa serve out their sentences behind bars, Marsha's parents take custody of the couple's children. Her parents took the children back to Jamaica. And though she will be out one day to reunite with her kids, one can only wonder if she regrets not only her actions, but her final decision. Had it not be for her relationship with him, she probably wouldn't have been involved in anything like this. Love is a very dynamic feeling. You can't just turn it off just like that. She lost everything for this man that she loved and that she trusted to provide her with safety and love, not only for herself, but for her children. You know, she became completely enmeshed and followed this man blindly. And the belief that he was gonna provide for her the life that she needed, and it all did come crashing down. There's no better feeling than when you make it to the top and become the only woman your man desires. But keeping his attention isn't always as easy as it seems. And that number one spot can be ripped from you in the blink of an eye. When your perfect world implodes, the fall from the top is a long way down.